What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you today's video and we are taking a look at the super giant in action, pairing it up with the witches, why is it this dominant attack strategy that it is at Town Hall 12 and Town Hall 13, going to be covering that in today's video, showing you guys how to use it, maybe we'll talk a little bit about how to defend it. I'm also hoping to maybe do some more in-depth defensive videos soon, so stay tuned for all of that. You can see here though, this is a spam-ish type strategy. There are some nuances to it that you're gonna have to, uh, to master in order for it to work. It's not quite as OP as it might look sometimes. In this case, using the wall wrecker, uh, which is a variation of this strategy that works well if you're coming opposite the town hall because oftentimes the wall wrecker uh, with the warden's uh, tome covering the you know high damage parts the wall wrecker uh, can get all the way in to the town hall and if you have a pekka ice golem you can take down that town hall pretty easily don't even need your witches to really follow up uh, with that so as you can see here that was kind of the case the uh, wall wrecker you know nice level four wall wrecker made it all the way to the town hall got it down uh, meanwhile the witches and the heroes kind of doing their thing around the rest of the base really not many witches at all died um, the town hall and the eagle are typically the biggest threats to this attack so we'll take a look at um, how you take that into account as you're planning out this attack strategy but the super giants are, i think are kind of the underrated troop in this composition because of course the witches kind of are the ones doing the damage they're the ones up at the end but the super giants are important and the reason they're better than other tanks is because in terms of the amount of troop space you have to invest and the amount of uh, hit points you get out of it they are the best troop in, uh, for that ratio. We'll move on, take a look at a Town Hall 13 attack for a moment, um, going up to number six here, seeing this at Town Hall 13. But like I said, 10 troop space for the Super Giant, and I think you get 4,200 hit points uh, at Town Hall 12. It's a little more at Town Hall 13, or actually maybe you have max Super Giants. I'll have to double check that. Um, it might be only level 9 at Town Hall 12. But the point is, compared to the uh, Golem, compared to the Ice Golem, they have more hit points per, uh, per troop space. So if you bring a certain amount of troop space, maybe you're dedicating 100 troop space to your tanks, you'll get the most hit points if you bring that in 10 Super Giants rather than like 3 Golems or something. And... Um, Really, the hit points is what matters most here. You don't need the freeze effect from the ice golems necessarily. There's really no benefit to having it concentrated into three units if you're bringing a couple golems. Um, it's kind of the right number of tanks too because ten or nine and ten uh, units allow you to spread them out. They're not going to get you know destroyed by a single inferno. Um, and if even if the, a single inferno is on the base like it is here. Uh, that can sometimes work to the advantage because the witches do very well against them. This is a Town Hall 13 base, of course, so we see uh, single infernos more at Town Hall 13 than we would at Town Hall 12, uh, just because the scatter shots kind of compensate for the multi infernos. As you can see here, um, comes in with the earthquake spells, then a back end jump. One of the main reasons this worked very well is because. The Eagle, the Town Hall, the Scatter Shots, everything was accessible um, by how the attack was set up. Nothing was too far off to the corner where it couldn't be accessed. And at Town Hall 13, you have a little more leeway because you have the Royal Champion who can be used you know, on the perimeter of the base if the Eagle is very offset or if a Scatter Shot is way out there. Town Hall 12, you don't have that luxury quite as much and this attack is not a guarantee, of course. I mean, it would be unfortunate if it was because it would ruin the balance, and the balance already is a little suspect at Town Hall 12, to be honest. But here's an example of the attack not working, and I apologize to the base builder behind this base if I'm burning it. Um, sometimes that does happen, and I, I, have, <laughs> I have had some angry Discord messages. Not recently, but over my YouTube career, I have uh, for that. So this is a good example of really, 
this is the main reason witches, super witches, um, which are so common at pretty much every town hall level right now, town hall 9 through 13, that's a huge range of town hall levels, witches are being used in some form, whether it's a super witch or a regular witch, at all of those town halls. The main problem is funneling uh, that really people run into. And that's what kind of got this attack here. A cut, one other thing to notice is the super giants were a little bit bunched up. You want to avoid that because the splash damage, if it's, you know, targeting five super giants at a time, it's five times the damage that if it was just targeting one super giant. So don't get them too bunched up if you can help it. Sometimes it's hard to avoid, but in this case, uh, take a look. You're going to have like six or seven witches walking around the outside of the base, if not more. It was a little unfortunate because the skeleton trap did pull them, but realistically, you want it to be so hard for your witches to not go inside the base that even a, you know, a random skeleton trap popping at an inconvenient time is not enough uh, for the, the super witches to be pulled to the outside of the base. In this case, um, I believe the lightning spells, or not lightning spells, but a haste spell and some balloons were used to take out that inferno, which was a very nice little trick there, but the funnel needed to be followed up with like a baby dragon or something. Even this uh, natural gap here, just because there's no external buildings, that wasn't enough um, because they got pulled by some of the buildings down at 6 o'clock here, and the town hall not going down is often what dooms this attack strategy the most, especially because, take a look, the siege barracks was used, not the wall wrecker, which is totally valid. Sometimes you don't need the wall wrecker, and you want to bring that extra uh, troop space, the P.E.K.K.A., the wizards you get. It's very powerful with the new troop levels, especially at Town Hall 12. But uh, the flip side is you got to make sure that you're going to get to the Town Hall and have enough troops going inside because the wall wrecker is not going to give you that sure uh, injection of troops into the core of the base and into the Town Hall especially. Okay, so we looked at some of these. I think we have a couple more to show as we wrap up this video. Um, this one was a three star as you can see and um, I think this is actually the last attack for today that I will be showing. Um, once again, using the lightning spells to take down uh, the infernos. We saw in the last attack kind of the cheeky move with the uh, hasting in some balloons which is also totally valid. Um, but typically this is what's going to be used and it still allows you to bring one jump spell uh, to move your troops through the base uh, because there was no wall wrecker used here which like I said is totally valid and we'll see here it works out nicely just using the siege barracks to just inject some more troops into this push. Uh, it, the wizards are really powerful to be honest. Uh, if the multi infernos don't get them they build up you know you get I don't know the exact number, but like 9, 10 wizards, maybe even more coming out of there. It's a lot of damage, not to mention the P.E.K.K.A. and the, uh, and I think in this case, the hogs that come out of it. So, um, everything moving through. The jump spell does a nice job kind of connecting most of the push here, although there are a couple witches on each flank. And um, the health of the attack is often measured by if these witches on the outside can stay up for all or most of the attack. If they die, the uh, push through the base tends to get surrounded and it becomes much more difficult to kind of finish off the last 25% or so of the base at the end. In this case, of course, the witches are going to go down on this side because they have the town hall which hasn't been dealt with yet. But on the other side, the witches do well, and I think the hogs and the siege barracks did a nice job getting out in front and kind of protecting everything. That's one of the benefits of the siege barracks when paired with this attack is that if you drop it right, you know, with your witches on kind of the front line here, they will um, come out delayed, obviously, because there it takes a while for the uh, wizards and Pekka to all make their way out. But once the hogs are are uh, dropped they tend to run out in front of the witches and do a great job tanking. Uh, so they're a good troop to bring, and you don't even have to use it necessarily on the side of the base, which is often what we think of with the siege barracks full of hogs. You drop it kind of off to the side. You can just drop it dead behind everything, let those hogs just run straight through, and um, they can be pretty effective in that sense when paired with the witches. So not a ton of troops left up at the end here, but enough to get it done. Couple wizards, couple witches, the Grand Warden, and enough time to make it all happen. 
And speaking of time, that is it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Let me know um, some topics you might want me to cover in future videos. I'll try to get some defensive type base building videos uh, in the works as well for you guys. I know that's always a popular topic, so I'll look into that. And yeah, that'll do it. Thanks for watching so much. Appreciate your viewership as always, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting the channel by entering my creator boost code, Bisect, in the settings tab of your game, and keep in mind it occasionally resets and must be re-entered. Click or tap for another video and be sure to subscribe. See you all next time, Bisectatron out.